If you haven't watched part one in our series, click on the link in the description to get a brief overview of IPF and a first-hand perspective of what it's like to live with IPF, told by two IPF patients. As mentioned previously, coughing is one of the major symptoms of IPF. Coughing affects over 80% of all individuals with IPF and can negatively affect their daily lives. You may be wondering by now, how exactly does coughing arise? And how can someone with IPF manage or even prevent their coughing? We have asked Dr. Seisha, a cough specialist from McMaster University, to share his knowledge and expertise on this topic. Why do patients with IPF experience coughing? And the question that you've asked, it's, um, it's a difficult question to answer specifically for IPF because unfortunately um, there's not uh, lots and lots of studies or experimental data out there which has exactly answered that question. But the first thing to say is that, um, as you all know, is that cough is a defensive uh, reflex. So um, all of us need to have a good cough reflex in order to stop uh, nasty things going into our lungs, be it foreign objects like toys and peanuts and food, uh, but also uh, things like uh, smoke. So if any of us walked into a room which was full of smoke, that smoke would enter into our lungs, it would irritate our lungs and the lining of the lungs, it would activate um, uh, sensory nerves in the lung and that information would go to the brain and the brain would then automatically make all of us cough. Um, the question that why is it that in patients with IPF, patients are coughing a lot more, um, the kind of things people have talked about in the literature is that maybe that the nerves in the lung which are innovating uh, the, the lungs Either they could be more sensitive, or it's possible that the nerves, when they go to the brain, that the brain is also uh, more sensitive and therefore it's responding uh, more than it should do. So there's this concept of peripheral sensitivity in the lung and central sensitivity in the brain. So those are the kind of brief uh, overview of the two areas which people have tried to look into. And what we've shown in patients with chronic cough is that um, the peripheral function nerve function is, is, is hypersensitive and it's also hyper-responsive. So we, we think that there's, it's related most likely due to hypersensitivity of the nervous system. Are there different types of coughs that patients may experience, such as a dry cough versus a productive one? And in patients with IPF, we've noticed that um, there are distinct groups of patients and often that's related to um, the, some of the consequences of idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis. So one of the common things that can happen with people who have more severe idiopathic fibrosis is that when the lung um, it, uh, it fibroses, it has a pulling effect. And that pulling effect can sometimes open up the airways and cause a condition called bronchiectasis, which is dilatation of the airways. Um, and when there's a IPF, which is associated with traction bronchiectasis that we normally uh, call it, often these people can get sputum and mucus and infections in those little airways and when they cough often it's quite a wet or productive cough whereas another group of patients often when they cough um, it's often very dry and even when they say it's productive when you ask ask them the question that how much phlegm or mucus they bring up often it's a very very small amount so so that's how i normally quantify the, the cough i ask patients that you know if you if you if you are coming up with a productive cough, how much is it, you know, in terms of volume? Um, because the treatment can sometimes vary based on whether it is productive and it's secondary to bronchiectasis or whether it's dry. What are some ways to prevent or treat coughing? The first thing to say is that uh, there's no currently licensed treatments for chronic cough. Um, um, and, you know, the last licensed treatment that we had was maybe over 30, 40 years ago when uh, a substance called dextromethorphan, which is commonly found in over-the-counter over cough syrups. What you, when you go to a pharmacy, you'll see lots of cough syrups and almost all of them will have dextromethorphan. And the evidence from, for that is, is relatively weak um, and it's 40, 50 years old. So because of that, we don't have any licensed treatment for chronic and cough. Also, uh, there's been some, in the last 10 years, there's been research looking at non-medicinal treatments uh, such as speech and language therapy to try and control the cough. You know, things like breathing techniques that we can use to suppress cough 
which may have some benefit. In patients who you've excluded infections, inflammation, uh, any other serious causes, and the cough is truly, if you think it's related to neuronal hypersensitivity, and that's a key question, you have to kind of be sure that uh, um, it's a neuronally driven mechanism. In, the, in that situation, uh, there's three or four options that patients may have. Um, the first option is to use uh, very low doses of opioids or so morphine sulfate. And these are very, very low doses, not the doses that you would generally use uh, for controlling pain in cancers. So this is five to 10 milligrams. Um, secondly, you can use medications which are called pregabalin or gabapentin, which are also what we call neuropathic, use, commonly neuropathic uh, treatments. And sometimes they can have some effects, but they should be used with extreme caution because of the side effects that they have. Sometimes people have also um, used uh, things like amitriptyline, but the, the studies are very weak. And the final thing to say about patients with IPF is that many patients with IPF will be on treatment like uh, pofenidone, um, which is Esbriet, commonly known, or, or something called uh, nintedinib. So these are two drugs which we uh, IPF specialists will prescribe to patients uh, with IPF to try and slow down the decline in lung function. And many of these treatments, particularly morphine, pregabalin, gabapentin, they all work on the central nervous system to try and reduce the central hypersensitivity. And that's why we have to be extra cautious to make sure that they don't get the side effects such as nausea, uh, uh, dizziness, unsteadiness, um, and, and any serious side effects. Are there any new treatments that you are currently working towards for coughing? In the space of coughing IPF, um, I'm aware of um, a couple of studies which have recently happened. Uh, one was with a substance called sodium chromoglycate. So this is a, um, a medication uh, which was actually used many, many years ago as an in, in an inhaled form for asthma. But uh, a company called Patara developed this sodium chromoglycate in a nebulized form, uh, and they used that to study coughing IPF. And they showed that uh, in a nebulized form, there is a reduction um, in uh, coughing in patients with IPF. So that was a very small phase two study. Uh, and I'm not sure whether they've taken that on to uh, phase three yet. Um, secondly, I know of uh, a study which was finished a couple of, last year uh, of a substance called Jefferpixant. And this, will, this is an interesting medication because this is a tablet medication which blocks uh, a receptor called P2X3. And this is an ATP receptor. And what they found in chronic cough is that if you, in, if you take this tablet orally, it can reduce coughing uh, by about 35 to 40%. And that study was in chronic cough patients. So that was just published in phase three. Uh, it's not published yet, but the, but the results, the top line data just came out a couple of weeks ago to show that it met its primary endpoint. But there may be some promise with that drug, which will hopefully be out in the market maybe in the next year or two, the FDA approved. Whether or not um, that will be licensed for use in, in IPF is still unknown. Um, there are some other medications, such as something called neurokinin antagonists. Um, it hasn't been studied in IPF. It's been studied in patients with chronic cough. Um, and, um, but that's completed phase two recently, and I was involved in that study. And, and when it goes to phase three, depending on what the results look like, uh, it's possible that they may... Uh, in the future look at um, uh, IPF patients as well. I'm considering a swallow test. What are the benefits of a swallow test? So that's a very good question because one of the observations that we've made in patients with idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis is that it's often associated um, with uh, gastroesophageal reflux disease. Um, and um, so many patients who have IPF also have heartburn, indigestion, and reflux disease, and often they'll need some acid suppression to control their reflux. Um, so sometimes uh, acid, anti-acid therapy can be of benefit. Uh, on top of that, um, some people would advocate something called promotility agents. So the concept that maybe uh, even if it's not acidic, if it's even if it's non-acid, if the acid, if the non-acid uh, refluxate is coming up into the esophagus it may benefit from a medication which stops that happening. So things like promotility agents like um, uh, low doses of azithromycin or erythromycin, which is a commonly used antibiotic, can be used sometimes. Uh, and also uh, something like uh, domperidone, which is also a promotility agent, can be used sometimes with, with care. Um, and whether or not um, someone needs a reflux, uh, a, a, a swallow test 
to make sure they're not aspirating. If they fear that when they're eating or drinking, they fear as if something is going down the wrong way, then I think that's a, a worthwhile test to do to make sure that they're, uh, they're, they're not aspirating because uh, that could be uh, something which can be uh, potentially identified and treated. Thank you for watching and we hope you learned from our videos. Please be sure to consult with your doctor for more information and to discuss possible treatments for you. We have attached more resources and support groups in the description box below. If you or a loved one are affected by IPM, remember you do not need to go through it alone.